Happy Wellness Wednesday! Okay, I apologize for running late. The weather has been horrible and I'm actually in between two meetings right now, but I wanted to make good on my promise of talking tonight about how to raise healthy kids. I know that it is back to school for most of you, um, not yet for Mr. Parker. Uh, hopefully preschool will start in uh, January, but nobody quite yet. So um, we will see uh, how how he fares once he starts school. So um, tonight we're talking about healthy kids, how to raise healthy kids, how to have healthy kids. And we are going to focus primarily on some lifestyle choices that you can make and things you can integrate every day so that everybody in the household is a little bit healthier. And this sort of sparked because I was meeting with a friend and we we're talking about preschool and her son going to school and being exposed to all the kids and they are um, getting dirty and grubby hands and putting everything in their mouth and so on and she said you know just you wait Parker's gonna be there and Parker's gonna be getting sick every day and coming home with all these new things so what I find to be kind of interesting is that anybody that knows me and knows sort of the chiropractic lifestyle, uh, most chiropractic kids don't get sick. And they go to school just like everybody else. They're exposed to germs just like everybody else. Um, knock on wood, Parker is 20 months. And we lived in the city up until last month. He was exposed to lots of different people. He went out to lots of different places. And not to say that we were, you know, in downtown Chicago and he was putting random things in his mouth, but um, a lot of things are airborne and he was exposed to lots of different people. And he had one virus, um, I don't know, maybe like six months ago. He had a small virus. He had a fever a couple nights. Um, one night it went up to 103 and that was kind of scary. It was kind of stressful for me being a first time mom, but I did what uh, innately I knew that I should do with him. So we breastfed throughout the night. You know, I stayed up, I checked his fever. We did not give him any fever reducers. You know, I wiped him with a cool cloth and we gave him a bath and we took our time and he passed that. And now the reason for that, I know fevers can be super, super scary, but you do not want to give your child medication for fever because the fever is the body's way of fighting off an infection. So if you are able to weather that storm and the fever does not reach critical mass, which would be a fever of 104, a fever of 105, obviously in that situation, you want to call your physician, you want to go to urgent care, but most of the time, a fever is a good thing. So keep that in mind and don't be scared of it now how do we avoid getting to that point that's what we do now most of you that know me again I own North Shore proactive health in downtown Libertyville and proactive is the way that we approach things so if you're watching what you are feeding your child what they are exposed to and the stress that they are under believe me they're gonna be far happier and healthier so what are they exposed to Take them out and let them play in the mud. Let them play in the dirt. Um, let them play with the dog. Uh, just this morning, Parker was hugging Sammy, kissing Sammy. Now, I'm not talking about the dog literally like French kissing the baby. Uh, you know, like, let's be smart here. But, you know, up to a point, they should be exposed to these things because that's how they colonize their immune system. And as far as what you are feeding them, we do not do any sugar in the house. So Parker is, again, 20 months and he's dairy free, he's gluten free, he is sugar free. Now up to a point. So we were in Italy in May. Parker did try, I think he tried spaghetti and I think that he tried uh, gelato. Okay, so I'm not that crazy. I did give him a little taste, but on an everyday basis, we do not do sweets, uh, we do not do any kind of milk. He still is breastfed, but if I make formula for him, I do a handmade formula, and I'm happy to share that recipe if anybody's interested, and it does involve almond milk. I am currently living with my mother, hello Jan, 
as we do construction on our house. So I do not have access to all of my um, tools and tricks and, and recipes and everything. So I am using some store made almond milk. I found something super awesome at Sunset. Um, it's not a common brand, anything I'd ever seen before. But usually I will even just make my own almond milk in a Vitamix. So that's super awesome, easy way to give your toddler or baby some nutrition without going the dairy route. And then when it comes to foods, we don't do processed foods. So everything that Parker makes is either made by me or obviously, you know, if we eat out, I'm akin and I'm aware of the fact that he may be eating some gluten. Um, he may be having some oils that we would not normally have at the house. You know, if we go out for breakfast, I try to get him poached eggs that are poached in water, not poached with oil, so that we're making healthier choices. And uh, we do, you know, gluten-free at all times but we do not do gluten-free bread for him that is highly processed. I don't want to trade chemicals for the gluten. So that's another thing to be paying attention to. And then really just watching, um, you know, the stress of your child. So make sure they're getting out, that they're exercising and they're having, having a way to expend their energy. I see a lot of mom group posts about how to get their kids off of, you know, the cell phones or the TV or the video games. So if you're able to do that, and I'm not talking about literally like going home and shutting off all electronics, but work it into life and work it into their normal habits so that that becomes more of a natural thing so they have to go outside and play and it doesn't matter what the weather is the weather in Chicago today it's crummy um, but we were outside so we went to the park and there's lots of things that you can do Parker was playing with like sticks and rocks and he did some nature thing last week um, making like stone soup so there's lots of things you can do with your kids outside that do not involve the television and believe me it will make the entire family happier and healthier if you're able to do that so boost their immune system with little tips and tricks like that and you will not be fighting these colds every week that people are having to deal with so again all of it is going to come from their gut a couple tips that we use in the office our patients are huge fans of a product that we use called seasonal life and it comes in, a, in an adult version and it comes in a kid's version and what it is is it's a bunch of flavonoids it's a bunch of enzymes obviously i'm reporting live from my car uh, that will help to fight off if they have any of those seasonal allergy things going on. And for those of you in Chicago, you know, the weather is like super weird here. It's 91 minute, it's rainy and, and crummy the next minute. So what does that mean? That we're going to have higher mold counts, we're going to have higher pollen counts, and we're going to have a lot of that stuff around longer this fall. So if that's been an issue for your child in the past, check out this seasonal life at salutogeniclife.com. It's also available in the office if you're local. Getting your child on a probiotic is fantastic. So we do something in the office called Baby Belly. It's a powder. That's what Parker takes. I put it in his formula, in his bottles every day. It's super easy. Um, sometimes I'll put it in like applesauce or, or some kind of mix in. It even goes in chia pudding. So super simple. Do that, the probiotics, every single day for everybody in the household. There's varying amounts and there's varying um, intensities that you should do depending on if you're a child, if you're an infant, or if if you're an adult so make sure that if you have questions about that send me a message and then also doing you know a multivitamin for the adults there's a little bit of thunder the adults and uh, the children in the house to help boost everybody's immune system so again those are some really easy proactive tips that you can use um, the adult version of the seasonal life does have a um, building up period so if you're worried about your allergies please start at ASAP I think it takes like a week to build up to the dosage that you need to be at the kids doesn't have that the kids if they are taking like Flonase or if your kid is on like um, Zyrtec or any of those anti-allergy medications get them off that stuff um, and get them onto something that's more natural and more preventative as opposed to just treating their symptoms. Because believe me, if they're having allergy symptoms right now, um, there's a lot more going on in their gut than, than meets the eye. So please take a look into those options. Again, Dr. Jordan Leisure with North Shore Proactive Health and Salutogenic Life. It is very, very easy to incorporate some of these tips to keep your children healthy back to school, to keep you happy, healthy, and sane as they go back to school. 
give that a try. If there's questions, feel free to private message me. And again, none of this is meant to be medical advice. It's just meant to answer a couple questions that we had from patients this week. And I hope that you find it beneficial and easy to integrate. If there's something that you'd like to hear about, please send me a message and we will talk about it next week. Watch my Dr. Jordan Leisure page because I'm going to put up a couple notes uh, and an infographic on how to utilize some of these products in everyday use. Have an awesome Wednesday and we will see you next week. Bye-bye.